you said before recording this interview that you are back, right back from the streets. So what's yeah, the situation uh, there? Could you please describe for us? Yeah, the downtown means it looks like uh, the continuation of the peaceful love, dignity and freedom revolution. Uh, people are waving along the streets, uh, hundreds, dozens of thousands, uh, not in one uh, part of the city, but uh, in different parts of the city. Uh, and the situation is like that in uh, many, many Belarusian cities, both big and uh, small. Uh, people feel as uh, if they have won. Uh, I wouldn't be that fast to make this conclusion because uh, the release of uh, uh, people who were detained in the previous four days doesn't mean that the authorities are ready to accept and to consider even the agenda that the people provided and required the authorities to fulfill, namely freeing all political prisoners, stopping brutality, partially that uh, is done, and hold free and fair elections. When you say agenda of the people, who do you mean in the people? Uh, people how organized are they? they? Yeah, uh, first of all, we're talking about Svetlana Tikhanovska, the uh, lady mm -hmm. who has won presidential elections based on uh, numerous sources. Uh, her uh, popularity rating and her uh, number of votes is around 60-70%, which is not confirmed, but definitely uh, she beat Lukashenko in this uh, presidential election campaign. Uh, we did not have free and fair elections, of course, but based on uh, the ballot station vote count, which was uh, free and fair, based on the, the protocol that uh, we have, the uh, she won with a landslide, uh, no doubt about it. Of course, when Lukashenko today, Central Election Commission declared yes. over 80% of the support, mm -hmm. and even some uh, people who are close to the authorities argued that uh, that was kind of uh, uh, the blow to Lukashenko himself. So we see the erosion of the uh, homogeneity of the Belarusian authorities. We see many people in four structures, nomenclature, uh, state enterprises supporting the agenda of the opposition, which is quite clear, free and fair elections. And Svetlana Tikhanovska's only point in the, her agenda was to hold free and fair elections with all people out of prison. Uh, what are the factors, uh, you think, that could ch challenge the uh, official results now? Uh, who can challenge it? What could be the factor for that? They are announced. Well, first of all, yeah. re recount of the votes, one thing. Then comparing uh, ballot, well, protocols of, from ballot stations, uh, well, polling people, you name it. There are many, many things. For example, we had a video from uh, different uh, uh, state enterprises like oil refinery, truck plant, tractor plant, fertilizer plant. <clears throat> chemical plants, and uh, the uh, one of the persons asked, so who voted for Tikhanovska? Mm -hmm. All people raised their hands and stood up. Who voted for Lukashenko? Nobody. I understand that this is a, a legitimate reason, but that's why we, we demand free and fair election. This is not like we accept uh, the defeat of Lukashenko right now without conditionality. We believe that there must be a smooth transition process there must be a negotiation of a round table discussion how to hold it, not just uh, to stick to the point that, Luk that Lukashenko uh, is uh, with, uh, that I won the election and I can just mm -hmm. be uh, merciful to the people. We don't need mercy. We need justice. We need rule of law and we need free and fair elections. That's pretty, pretty simple. You are talking about discussion, dialogue, uh, I guess you mean, but... Uh... Uh, how can it happen? And also, who is uh, who is that uh, who would be able to correct uh, these results? How to say? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, to correct the situation. What you are yeah, describing now? We don't now. know who can. Yeah, we don't know who can impact uh, Lukashenko directly. We know that uh, China and Russia and Putin recognize the elections. Uh, we understand that Russia has uh, and can have a dangerous side game, we do not know what its, its details. But uh, we are sure that our European partners, Georgia, Ukraine, definitely are interested in free and independent country. 
That is why it's a matter of who can be this intermediary, this uh, facilitator of mm -hmm. the dialogue between Lukashenko and the civil society and Svetlana Tikhanovskaya's team. And uh, there may be many, uh, re many people, including uh, ex-presidential or presidential president of Georgia, uh, Mikhail Saakashvili, who uh, is a close friend uh, based on his own judgment and the judgment of Alexander Lukashenko. So he can uh, really help us out of this political crisis. We don't want any bloodshed. That uh, is the case right now. We don't want any uh, Russian intermediation, which can lead us to losing sovereignty. But we definitely need support of our European friends. Uh, President of Lithuania uh, sent his proposal. I'm sure that Ukraine is also very much interested in that. And of course, Georgia. So the, we, are, we have friends worldwide, the friends that can mm -hmm. talk to Lukashenko and tell him about uh, possible and the best uh, ways out of this crisis. But if he says no to anybody, if he rejects all the proposals uh, from uh, our friends, then he would face uh, the Kremlin one to one. And this is the worst case scenario for us. And uh, is it the worst case scenario for him? Uh, that would mean that uh, he would definitely lose politically. He would be condemned by all Belarusians and uh, he would lose the historic chance to build free and fair and sovereign Belarus. Uh, he, numerous, many, many times he claimed that he would rather die than uh, sign up to uh, Russia, that he would submit, uh, deliver independence to the Kremlin. Uh, let's hope that he was sincere in this particular case. Uh, when he uh, identified himself and Belarus and his power in one attraction, that's one thing. And right now he should face political competition. Uh, he may change his mind, I don't know. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm trying to understand. What could be uh, the reason uh, that would help him change his mind? What do you think? I mean, uh, what's the situation in Belarus uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, you named Russian, Russia's asymmetric involvement in Belarus politics as one of the immediate threats just, uh, just an hour ago in a Zoom meeting. Does Russia have a meaningful support in Belarusian society? What kind of support does it have? Uh, you just said that uh, oh. most of the people do not like what's going on now in uh, Belarus and are against uh, Lukashenko. What this perception is based on, your perception? It's like uh, overwhelmingly when you have uh, different opinion polls, you have talked to people, you have in-depth interviews, you just walk around, you have... Uh, uh, different uh, internet voting, polling, you name it. And there is a people have only one point on the agenda. Lukashenko must go. We are sick and tired of him. He is no longer our president. He stole our elections. And when, like, 10, 5 years ago, that was not that overwhelming. But when he, uh, through his election commission, through his uh, uh, network of fraud, uh, gave himself over 80% of support that was too much even for tolerant Belarusians. So uh, that is based on the observation of uh, so many uh, political structures, civil society organizations, uh, scholars worldwide, even now, uh, even people we know from nomenclature, they say, well, if he uh, would have given himself like 53%, we would have had some doubts, but 80% is too much even for us. So uh, right now, uh, uh, here's the Rivoli has uh, made so many different mistakes. Bloodshed happened in Minsk, bloodshed happened yeah. in Gomel. Uh, we don't know still, many people are missing. So we are still uh, uh, waiting for the whole truth to be revealed. Uh, we um, demand uh, uh, responsibility uh, of the people who, uh, who made uh, this tragic scenario happen. We definitely... Uh, I see that Minister of Interior, Deputy Minister of Interior, the, the Prime Minister, they're not adequate. They do not see this uh, cruelty, atrocities, and uh, and uh, torture that happened in Belarusian prison detention centers. So they must leave. They must go. But who so should tell is, them? Uh, who do they care about? I mean, who who does Lukashenko care about? You listed um, that, different societies, uh, uh, persons, yeah. uh, friends, wh whoever, but... Uh, does he care about yeah, that? You're very, 
You are very, very right. Uh, we don't know who he cares about. He cares about his power. He cares about probably his family. Uh, and I don't know what authorities, what people of morality are for him. Uh, maybe he is, maybe Mikhail Saakashvili, maybe... Uh, Why? Why Pope. should he care about maybe... Saakashvili's uh, views now? Uh, because in 2010, Saakashvili was supportive of him. He helped Lukashenko establish and conduct the dialogue with the European Union and America. That's why he, uh, so he many times situation. publicly yeah. said... A different, so he's got the history of relations between Saakashvili and Lukashenko is here. Okay. A few people in the world have it. So we, uh, with, uh, relevant, it doesn't matter what kind of situation, what kind of attitude you guys in Georgia have uh, to Mikhail I will Saakashvili. tell you about the attitude also, but first I would like to ask you, do you, do you think yeah. that Lukashenko uh, does not have enough power, enough strength now to suppress the processes that are going on in Belarus? Yes, uh, uh, this brutality of his actions, uh, he, I mean, actions of the state bodies are kind of eased uh, during last uh, 24 hours, but uh, do you think he does not have enough power yeah, to, is, to keep it, yeah. to keep uh, himself as a yeah. president? He is a cunning, cynical politician. He understands what's going on. He can evaluate what's going on. And uh, the reason, uh, the uh, reason to stop violence and brutality is not that he became kind-hearted or he uh, was told the truth. The reason was very simple. He doesn't have enough power, authority to uh, continue bloodshed because for the first time in history of Belarus, uh, political opposition, civil society opposition is supported by workers. Workers en masse joined the protest and their agenda is not additional pieces of sausage or tax breaks or loans. There's, their demands are very simple, free and fair election. Stop brutality, because when workers were shown the way Belarusians, their neighbors, their sisters and brothers were treated by police, they say, how come our taxes go to support this fascist-like treatment? This is not for Belarus. That's why Lukashenko realizes that he cannot now uh, put this genie of mass anger protest back to the bottle, into the bottle. Mm, you said, you mentioned... So now the issue is who, who would go further, uh, Lukashenko or the society? Uh, that's the issue as far as I understand. Uh, you, you mentioned the word uh, revolutionary. So you consider the processes uh, revolutionary now. Are they irreversible? Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing irreversible in this life. And uh, I, uh, right now, the authorities realize that they have lost the street, they have lost young people, they have lost uh, workers. So they uh, try to uh, break down this unity of the society by uh, the process of dialogue. They would like to shape the agenda. They would like to imitate the agenda by saying, well, mm -hmm. let's investigate what happened. There are many ways to substitute the agenda of the people and uh, of, the, of uh, Svetlana Tikhanovska with the, this fake agenda. Uh, the authorities are far from being weak, and uh, it's not like in 1991 when the uh, Soviet Union collapsed because of the weakness of the state. We are far from that. It's not like Ukraine. Uh, Lukashenko still holds a lot of power in his hands, mm -hmm. but uh, the bloodshed and uh, using cruel means of, uh, of uh, pressure would lead him even to even higher and much more powerful response from the society and the people. And then it will be definitely be much more violent. And uh, Lukashenko could face the fate, not of the person who can agree on uh, terms of leaving the office, or leaving the country, but like Ceausescu, people just, you know, they are open to discuss even this option if the authorities uh, continue this bloodshed and this cruelty. Do you think that Oh, well, uh, uh, do you think the the momentum is getting closer? It's uh, uh, the closest in Belarusian history. We have never had this. Uh, situation changes every day. Three days of peaceful protest in all cities of Belarus, including small ones. It's unprecedented, unique. We have never seen anything like that, but the people are full of joy, laughter. They congratulate one another. They say that this is the beginning of new life. They hope that 
the authorities would uh, have enough uh, common sense, responsibility, not to use force uh, again against people to investigate that and uh, to start the meaningful process of democratization and uh, institutionalizing freedom in our country. I understand that very well, that, uh, that uh, attitude and uh, that emotion, but uh, how would you evaluate the, but there is something else needed for changes. Uh, how would you evaluate the readiness of the Belarus opposition and the civil society for the large scale changes? Uh, would you consider useful replacing Lukashenko at any price with any result just just to uh, just not to have him is that the uh, goal I, I think this is the only meaningful option uh, this is the only item on the agenda I mean the most the, the biggest one and uh, I believe that uh, Lukashenko during this uh, campaign he many times said that he would like to go on the Soviet style way to preserve centrally planned economy to keep uh, all the assets uh, resources under control he is sure that uh, there's nothing wrong with the model he is alien to democracy and to economic freedom he is alien to uh, entrepreneurship so uh, i do not yes, see but, any yes but what uh, what is the uh, uh, part of what part of the society considers him uh, as a factor for stability in belarus well, it's, uh, Do we know? Uh, he is the biggest, again, if we have the election results, even under uh, very severe circumstances, Belarusians responded clearly. We need change. We don't want Lukashenko. And if it's 70%, mm -hmm. we, I'm sure that uh, the any democratic election with uh, clear and transparent and equal uh, opportunities for everybody, would lead to Lukashenko's landslide. I'm sure that he would get his 3% of the vote. That's his uh, threshold. He will not be able to uh, make it higher in the situation where people know all the truth about the way he ran the, ran the country for 26 years. But to make that happen, uh, there is, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. There might not be enough, um, uh, enough, uh, how to say, uh, enough readiness or enough uh, potential inside the Belarus. Uh, it is necessary to have some kind of, or not some kind of, but very important and meaningful support from the outside. Do you feel that? I don't mean, uh, I mean, do you feel that apart yeah. from the critical declarations from different countries, governments or organizations? You see that uh, talking about the uh, study conditions. Uh, Is anybody my, ready to uh, mediate, uh, to, to be a yeah. mediator, for instance? Do you see anybody? Uh, uh, President of Lithuania mm -hmm. has already made, uh, sent Belarusian authorities his proposal of how to go on. I'm sure that European Union would be most willing to be as an intermediator. The, uh, the ministers Ukraine. are discussing today of the EU, uh, EU right. foreign exactly. ministers, the exactly. issue, yeah. So we have many, many friends around. Uh, in terms of readiness, I would tell you one thing. Yeah. Uh, Belarus now is much uh, better prepared for change than any other country, including Georgia and Ukraine, because for the last 25 years, my colleagues and I, we've been working on different draft proposals, draft laws, concepts, I know. Yeah. how to uh go on with economic reforms we know what and how to avoid mistakes in uh, fiscal policy in taxation uh, in monetary policy in privatization we have ready-made laws so if we have political will and uh, authority uh legitimacy to start reforms within one two years you won't be able to recognize belarus uh we'd be uh we all enjoy georgian miracle in the uh, 2000s, and definitely that would be an opportunity for Belarusian miracle without any, um, uh, without any exaggeration. So uh, you mentioned Georgia again. I, I will go back to the jo attitude of Georgians towards Lukashenko. Uh, uh, some part of the society, I don't know, I haven't measured it. Uh, there, there are no research. There is no research of that. But uh, part of the society. Uh, some of our listeners are calling, and I've heard that uh, quite often, um, like uh, Lukashenko, because the, he, he did not 
recognize Abkhazia and South Ossetia, occupied regions of Georgia. I would like to ask you, what should uh, the people watching the processes in Belarus from Georgia know about Lukashenko and his uh, policy? Uh, my dear friends, Georgians, I love you. I've been to Georgia many, many times, and I have many friends, and I wholeheartedly support you guys in what you've been doing with the country. But believe me, I do not a single meaningful, responsible, influential politician in Belarus who would change this position. Lukashenko tries to uh, describe himself as the only guy who would make a, recognize Abkhazia and Ossetia, the only guy who would not recognize uh, the situation in Crimea and uh, Ukraine. But all Belarusians are like that. I don't, again, that's just something that even Russians don't understand. There is not a single uh, political organiz organized force inside uh, the country that would change the attitude of the official Minsk if it is not represented by Lukashenko. We are for territorial integrity of Georgia, of Ukraine. We are for peace. Uh, cooperation without any imperialistic uh, tendencies, hybrid wars conducted by our eastern neighbor. Uh, do, do you see any kind of threats that Russia would help processes the way that Lukashenko is replaced, but with someone uh, that with someone that uh, would uh, serve Russia well, better? We definitely are suspicious of uh, some people in the opposition, even who uh, cannot define define their attitude toward Russia, toward Georgia, Ukraine, uh, and uh, we definitely would never support them. We'll never support them. But of course, uh, looking at uh, what uh, Russia had in, in Georgia and Ukraine, so many spies, agents of influence, organizations, media. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine. Uh, how many more spies and agents and influence uh, the Kremlin and Russia has inside Belarus? Yep. All four structures bosses were trained in Russia. Yep. A lot of uh, commercial activities, Gazprom, uh, oil business, all these uh, commercial ties. No exaggeration. That's why we must be very, very careful how to uh, word our agenda with Russia. Back in 2003, my center and the, my colleagues, we drafted uh, the way to uh, establish ties with Russia based on three market principles, freedom of uh, movement of goods, services, capital and people. And I think that this is the best way. We don't need any subnational bodies. We don't need union state. We don't even need Eurasian Economic Union, which mm -hmm. turned into a farce. Uh, they root for commercial interest of nomenclature and force structures in both countries. That's why we are ready to overhaul our relations based on uh, civilized principles. And there is a very clear red line here. No talk about independence of Belarus. You uh, uh, you said uh, uh, in today's meeting, you uh, said that Tikhanovskaya was uh, tortured like you were in uh, back in uh, 2010 when right. you were running for president. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> what uh, what exactly did you mean under um, under the word torture? But, uh, if you know the book Sophie's Choice, uh, William Styron, uh, that's when uh, you are offered uh, a choice, an alternative, which just blows your mind, which just kills your soul, which is just uh, leads you to suicide. The choice is whether if you say something, do something, or your close relatives, your friends, your compatriots uh, will be shot. Uh, that's the choice uh, people have. And if you are under this kind of psychological pressure and torture for like many, many hours, when you're not prepared for this kind of torture. You just, you know, you understand that the best way is to uh, make a statement saving or make an attempt to save your close people. And uh, Tikhanovsky and myself, we just made it very clear that uh, we did that under severe pressure. And uh, this kind of evidence is the evidence of torture. So, and uh, uh, I, I I, I, we have to finish this interview, uh, uh, but unfortunately, but I would like to ask you, uh, yeah. what would you say to the, uh, to the West? How 
quick should they be in their reactions, in their actions? You know, U.S. Um, Secretary of State in an in interview with the RFERL mentioned mm -hmm. sanctions, a uh, particular type of sanction, sanctions. Uh, so what would be your message to the West today? Uh, Belarus doesn't have oil, doesn't have gold, it doesn't have nuclear weapons. So the West, meaning European Union, United States, can afford being uh, one force based on values. Uh, Value-based politics is a very rare animal nowadays. So in Belarusian case, uh, Lukashenko made this kind of attempt to uh, lure the West through the Minsk dialogue format, which failed miserably. It failed to, to deliver on OEC promises. So it must be very clear position uh, to support the gender of the civil society, of all the people here in Belarus and Svetlana Tikhanovska. Free all political prisoners, uh, all everybody, investigate brutality and cruelty and torture, uh, conduct a meaningful dialogue and hold free and fair election. That's it. Without it, do not recognize uh, Lukashenko as a legitimate president after 9th of September. This is the deadline for the recognition. Uh, and then uh, do uh, everything to impose the most painful sanctions on the uh, authors and stakeholders of the regime. So we are having very, very busy, very challenging, uh, very challenging several weeks ahead before the yeah, exactly. date. Exactly. This is like, yes, yeah, uh, so I uh, definitely invite everybody to follow Belarus. Quite which is, a test uh, for, the, uh, for Belarus and for the West also. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, as I said, it's very easy to be value-based uh, uh, on, Belarus, on Belarus right now. It's bipartisan, it's all-partisan, it's no matter who you are, if you see torture, if you see injustice, if you see uh, fraud of that scale, you must take sides. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romanchuk. Goodbye. Thank you so much.